Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, convert binary number in a linked list to an integer. All right. So in this question, we're going to be given the head, which is the reference node to a singly linked list. The value of each node in the linked list is either zero or one. The linked list holds the binary representation of a number. And what we want to do is we want to return the decimal value of the number in the linked list. So for example, over here, we have a linked list where one points to zero, zero points to one. So in other words, we actually have a value of one, zero, one in binary. And all we're doing is we're taking this base two value and we're going to convert it to a base 10 integer value, which is what we want to output. So one, zero, uh, one in base 10 is nothing else but five. And that's what we end up outputting. So real quickly, I'll just go through what all of that means and how we can actually solve this question and several different ways that we can use to solve this question. All right, so let's just go over here and uh, let's look at a binary number. So let's say we have the binary number one, zero, one, zero. Okay. Right, so this over here is our binary value and let's just try to convert it into a decimal. So let me just show you the simple way or how you would normally do it. So what you would do is you go through it by each index. So this is index zero, index one, index two and three and so on and so forth. So at index zero, what's going to happen is we're going to have a two. And this is why it's called a base two value. And two is going to be raised to whatever index we're currently on. So in the beginning, we're at index zero. So two to the power of zero. And we're going to multiply that with whatever value is currently there. So in this case, the current value over there is the value zero. So we multiply that with zero. Now we're going to add this with the next uh, index. So now let's go on to the next index. So we're currently over here. This is at index one. So two to the power of one. And we're going to multiply this with the number one since we have one over here. Okay, I'm pretty sure you understand. So let's just go through this. So now we'll have two to the power of two multiplied by zero. And we would add that with two to the power of three multiplied by one. So the zeros and zeros are both going to end up being zero. So we can just cancel it out. And over here, we're going to have a two plus a four, eight. So two plus eight. And this over here is going to give us a value of 10. So what this basically means is one zero one zero in binary actually represents the number 10. So this is how we actually convert it into an integer that we need. But now let's see in a linked list. So let's say this over here was a linked list. What would happen? We would have one pointing to zero, pointing to one, pointing to zero. So in this case, what's happening is we're going from left to right. So the first value is the very last value. So over here. So it's one, right? So now we want to see how we can actually go starting from one all the way to the very rightmost value and get the answer that we're looking for. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so what's gonna happen over here is uh, we're gonna have a value and this value over here is gonna start off at zero. So let's just call this our answer or result and this is what we're actually going to end up outputting. So in the beginning, this is gonna start off with zero. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through our linked list. Let's just assume this is a link linked list. One points to zero, pointing to one and then pointing to zero, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the head node, which in this case is one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two multiplied by zero plus one. Okay. So we're going to multiply it by two. And we're going to add it with whatever value we're currently on. So two into zero plus one gives us a value of one. So now we're going to two into one, since that's the new value of our answer. And we're going to add that with zero, since that's the value that we currently have. So that gives us a value of two. Uh, now we go to one over here. So we did two into two, four. And now we're going to add one to it. So two into two plus one. So four plus one gives us five. Now we go to the next value, which is zero. Over here, we do five into two, which is 10. And we're going to add that with zero. And again, like as you can see, we got the same answer, which is 10. So this is just an other way to get it. And this way is probably going to be a lot easier for solving our question. And now finally, we're going to be looking at the same. So the idea that we used over here, we're going to use that, but instead we're going to use bitwise operations in order to do it. So let's just go through that real quickly. All right. So I'll just say that we have the same binary number again. And uh, over here, we have two bitwise operations that we want to look at. So one of them is called a left shift. So what you have in a left shift. So let's say we just have the number one. OK, so it's a binary number. And what you can kind of imagine everything to the left of it as being zeros, but they don't matter. Right. So because it's a zero, it's just going to get canceled off. So you can just imagine that there's a ton of values on the left of it. And you can kind of imagine that there's some part of some sort of uh, division or some sort of point and everything to the right of this is zero. Okay. And we're only going to be considering the one over here. 
So when you perform a left shift, what happens is that this value, which in this case is 1, is going to move to the left by 1. So in this case, this over here is going to go, everything is just going to get shifted to the left by 1. So you can also imagine that this value, which is past the point, is now going to be inside of our point. So now this 1, after performing the left shift, is now going to have a, a value of 1, 0. Okay? So you can kind of understand how we can actually use that to our advantage in this question. And one more thing that we're going to be using is the OR bitwise operation. So it's, uh, this is how it's denoted. And in simple words, all it is is the operation we use while adding two values. So uh, I'll just show you an example. So when you have 1, 0, and you want to add that with 0 and 1, when you perform the OR operation, what happens is we end up resulting with the value 1, 1. In simple words, if there's a 1, we're going to end up picking that. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to kind of use the OR operation to help us add the value. So let's just see how this is going to look like in order to get this answer over here. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to start off with the value of 0 for our answer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to left shift our 0 by 1. So when you left shift it by 1, what happens is, let's just look, what is the uh, binary representation? So let's just say everything, uh, so the values that we're going to be getting over here are going to be integers, but let's just look at the binary representation uh, in order to just understand. So over here we have 0, so 0 is just going to be represented with the value 0. So now when you perform a left shift by 1, so what's going to happen is this over here is now going to be 0, 0. Okay, but that still has a value of 0. So now what we need to do is we need to account for this value. So we need to add the value of 1. So what is 1 in binary? So 1 in binary is nothing else but 0, 1. So now when you add this or perform the OR operation, you're going to get 0, 1. So now this uh, our binary value after performing the steps is now going to be 0, 1, which in other words is just the number 1. So that's going to be what our integer's value is going to be. So uh, let's just perform it again. So now we're going to do the left shift. So on 0, 1, we perform a left shift. So now we have 0, 1, 0. And now we're going to add the value of uh, 0, right? Since we're currently on 0. And obviously, nothing is going to happen at that point. So now we have 0, 1, 0. And what is the value of 0, 1, 0? So over here, we have 2 to the power of 0. So that's 0 and 2 to the power of 1. So now our integer now has a value of 2. So you can see it's basically the same thing as the last thing I showed you, right? Or as the last process I showed you. So now we're going to do a left shift again. So 0, 1, 0, perform a left shift. So now we have 0, 1, 0, 0, okay? And now we need to account for the 1. And 1 is nothing else but 0, 0, 0, 1, okay? So in this case, when you do the OR operation, we're going to end up with 0, 1, 0, 1. So now we have 1, 0, 1. And 1, 0, 1 is nothing else but the integer value 5. So now we have 5, and if you perform the next step, which is the same as this, you're now going to end up with 10, and 10 is going to be our answer. So hopefully you understand all three of the methods. They're pretty similar in some way or the other, and now let's just see what that looks like in code. All right, so over here, we're going to start off with one method where we're going to store our binary value inside of a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the head node, so while head, and in order to iterate through each of the values, all we're going to do is we're going to start off at the head node, and each time we're going to move our current pointer to the next node. And to do that, we're going to change the value of head to be equal to head.next at each iteration. And we're going to go into this until we reach the very ending, and at that point, we're going to stop. All right, so now the question is, what do you end up doing over here? So one thing that we're going to do in this solution particularly is we're going to add whatever current value we're on. And the value that we're adding is going to be an integer, but we're going to convert that into a string. So the value, how do we get it? Well, we're going to go to our head node, and we're going to get dot val. So that gives us the value. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get all of the binary values inside of a string. But how do we convert that into an integer? So in Python, all we need to do is we're going to go to int. We want to give it the binary value that we want to convert. So in this case, we stored it in binary. And we're going to do comma 2. And the reason we're giving it 2 is because this over here is a base 2 value. So if you submit this, this should get accepted. OK, so that over there is one solution. And as you can see, it was accepted. And now let's look at the other solution that we were talking about. OK, so let's just remove whatever we don't need so far. So we don't need that. And this over here, we're going to redefine it. So instead of binary, let's call it result. And like I said earlier, result is going to start off with a value of 0. 
So there's one of two things we can do. So first, let's look at the non-bitwise way of doing it. So over here, all that we're going to do is we're going to take our result and each time we're going to change its value. So to do that, we're going to multiply the result with 2. So 2 multiplied by result and we're going to add it with whatever value we're currently on. So to do that, we're going to do plus head dot val. All right. So this should oh, and uh, finally, we return the result itself. And this should also get accepted. Okay, so this over here is also accepted. And now let's look at the last way, which is using bitwise operations. So again, the result over here is going to stay the same. But what's going to happen is over here, instead of doing the multiplication part, all we're going to do is we're going to left shift our value first. So result, so the left shift, this is how you do it. And we're going to uh, left shift it by one spot. So we do that. And now we need to account for whatever value we're currently on. And to do that, to kind of add that value, we're going to be using the OR operation. So we have the OR operation and we're going to do, be doing that with whatever current value we're on. So head dot val. And this over here should also get accepted. Okay. And as you can see, all of the solutions were accepted and hopefully you kind of understood several different ways to do this. And do let me know if you have any questions and thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.